Our next caller is Matt from New York. Hey, what's up, Matt? How can we help you? Hey, guys. So, um, a little backstory. So, I was around like, I'm 5'9". I was around like 230 pounds. I dropped about 60 pounds last year. I was doing a lot of running, a lot of weightlifting as well. I, But I came to realize how hard it is to keep that weight off after doing all that running. I was running about 30 miles a week. And uh, I was wondering now that I've gained about like nine pounds back since then, I'm about like 179 right now. Is there a way that I could build muscle and drop a little bit of body fat while maintaining the same, the same weight? Or do I have to bulk and then cut? No, hundred percent could do that. You can. I, um, it's hard. Uh, oh, I, you know, you might want you the Goldilocks zone. Yeah, you might end up gaining a little bit, but if you if you're if you put your calories at a small surplus, so a little bit above maintenance, it makes it much more likely. And then just focus on strength. Am I getting stronger in the gym? Do I feel more stable? Um, that'll make the biggest impact. And then what you do is you slowly increase your calories from there, so that you can get your metabolism to keep a boosting. Um, so that it be, it's more maintainable. Because what you experience is what we talk about all the time, where people lose a lot of weight but place so much focus on this kind of manual calorie burning mm-hmm. that they find themselves in a position where it's impossible to maintain. I actually think this is uh, a little bit easier than what people think it is. It's tougher mentally. right? The, that's the, the toughest part of this is that we we allow the scale of up and down a little bit or even the mirror, what we see in the mirror, to all of a sudden uh, dictate what you do inside the gym or what you do with your calories. I mean, honestly, if if your goal is to, hey, I want to build some strength, build some muscle, I also want to lose some body fat at the same time, then the goal really is to kind of hover around the same on the scale. like that. So you don't want to see too much north or south on there and just get stronger in the gym. So you basically are feeding the body what feels right and normal, which sounds, I know, uh, vague, but that's the goal is to eat to where you're satisfied, don't overconsume, don't really try and restrict, have good balance, make sure you hit your protein intake, and then get stronger in the gym, but don't don't eat an uh, over on the calories to where you're kind of staying the same on scale. Mm-hmm. If you do that, you know, and, and you focus on kind of hovering there while you're strength training and eating a balanced diet, the body will kind of naturally do this. You, you know, you'll have times where you're probably a little bit in a deficit. So the body utilizes some fat for energy. And then you'll have times where you're a little bit naturally above on calories. Some of that will get uh, partitioned over to building muscle and you should have this nice little exchange. It's the mental part that fucks with people because they go, oh, okay, here's where I need to be calorie wise. And because the scale isn't moving in a direction, they all of a sudden change things up. But um, this this is how like when I'm whenever I'm training and dieting, like if I have a goal in mind, it doesn't matter. Like this is kind of where I want to be. I, I don't want to see huge swings in any direction. That tells me that I'm feeding the body uh, adequate calories, and I know if I'm training consistently and following a good program, I'll build muscle, and then the body will probably lose some fat along the way. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. I also have one. What are you fo- Matt, Are you following any of the maps programs? What are you following right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm following anabolic right now. I just started stage two okay. uh, today. Actually, and yeah, I, uh, that was my, that was my second question. I had. Um, can I swap out for the trigger sessions? Can I use um, a suspension trainer rather than using the uh, the bands? Yes, you can. Mm-hmm. And any any kind of resistance training can replace the bands. The only key is. Don't overdo the intensity. Right. Which is easy to do. So, yeah, yeah. And the reason why we recommend bands is just because it's a little less damaging, too. So you get a nice pump, uh, and you don't really exceed that intensity uh, very often. Yeah, that's the one thing I'd caution about suspension trainer. I mean, like, if you do a suspension trainer and you make it pretty easy to do push-ups and to do some, like, rows on it, even some curls and uh, tricep extensions, all great exercises for the suspension trainer and can do the triggers, but... Uh, you don't want to be struggling to get that 15th rep. If you do 15 and you barely, your arms are shaking to get 59, too your intensity is probably yeah. too high. You're so just trying to keep driving that signal. Yeah. So whatever you use, because obviously you're not using weight, you're using the leverage of your body. Make sure you don't leverage it so much that you're struggling to get 15 reps. You should be able to do 15 to 20 reps relatively easy. If that's the case, then you're probably doing the right intensity for the trigger sessions. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. All right, perfect. Sounds good. Thanks well, for calling in, Matt. Thank you, guys. I appreciate everything. No problem. All right. Yeah, that's that's the the eternal struggle. It's like I lose all this weight, but what I did to get there is unsustainable. Yeah, I can't keep keep it up. What do I do now? I mean, if people only it's like eighty something percent plus 
fail rate after people lose a lot of weight. It's really not a weight loss issue. It's a keep weight off. Well, this is issue. part of why, though. Yeah. I mean, and I, totally. I feel like lately, I don't know why. I don't know if it's because we've talked about this on the show more often than not. Is the whole cardio thing mm -hmm. that we've been getting yeah. flack for? Yeah. Like, you guys are so anti cardio. It's like, no, this we're is not. The perfect case, uh, well, you know, in point of why this we is bring a, it up. this is the most common thing. Yeah. This is this is more common than the other way around. Most people use it as this tool. To get down to a certain they abuse weight, it. abuse it. Yeah, right yeah, I know, but they don't think they're abusing right. it. Though. So right. I don't like to use it because then someone goes, "Oh, I don't abuse it. I'm yeah. only doing it so many." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like you well, don't it's think the it. fast lo fat loss button. It's just yeah. like that button. They have they think that they have to keep hitting that button uh, in order to keep uh, shaving down. The, the yeah, fat. and in, insert any starting point, any sex, it doesn't matter. But using cardio as one of the main tools to get yourself down 30, 40, 60, whatever pounds. Not a fat, not long term. Effective. Yeah, unless you're love doing that like if you like if one of your favorite things is to get up now and go for a run in the morning and you want to make that a lifelong pursuit and you never stop that then by all means but that's not what happens mm -hmm. most people that decide they're going to start doing five to six days or 30 miles of cardio are doing it because they have this massive weight loss goal mm -hmm. and that is a that's a fast way to get there problem is as soon as you stop doing that, the weight's going to pile back mm -hmm. on. So Creeps that's why that's why we don't like to recommend people in that direction because now you're in this shitty situation versus had we built a good meal plan and built a program for fat loss around resistance training and just moving and walking more throughout the day, way more sustainable for this person for the rest of their life.